Hello, in this lecture we will work a problem that will be very similar to the homework. The numbers will change, the format will remain much the same. There's two things that we want to get from these types of problems and these types of worksheets. We want to first get the accounting concepts, in this case being the uh, accounting equation. And the second is that we want to learn the Excel. So 95% of what you will be learning in Excel, you're really going to get from the accounting classes here. This is where you want to learn 95% of the things you actually use when working in Excel. You will be taking an Excel class as well. When you do that, what you're really looking for there are tips and tricks that can help make your Excel worksheets look better, such as formatting, such as adding more color and more extended types of formatting. Those types of tips and tricks that can help to format your worksheet in a bit more advanced way. In just terms of getting through an Excel worksheet, maneuvering around, changing the formatting of the Excel worksheet, the practical inputting of data within to an Excel worksheet, the stuff you do 95% of the time when you use an Excel worksheet, that's what you learn here in the accounting classes. Later in the Excel classes, you learn how to make those worksheets look a little nicer and learn the tips and tricks that can help you to present those worksheets. So keeping that in mind, let's keep uh, let's take a look at what the worksheet has in this case. We first have in our accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We've got the accounts within our accounting equation. So within assets, we have cash is, a, is an asset, accounts receivable is an asset, supplies is an asset, liabilities is, uh, includes accounts payables liability and unearned revenues a liability. And the owner's equity includes capital as well as the income statement, the income statement being revenue and expenses, in this case, utilities and wages expense. We are then going to sum up the assets and the liabilities and the owner's equity. You don't need to do anything to these two cells here. They're going to populate automatically. And if they are green, that means we're in balance. It means that the assets, if I double click, are those cells equal the liabilities and owner's equity, which are these cells. Uh, we also have the net income, which again, you do not need to do anything to, will populate automatically, and that's going to equal the revenue minus the expenses. And the net income is part of the equity because it's revenue minus expenses. We're just going to enter the data in these cells here. So this is where we're going to input our data, and we're going to input these transactions over here into these cells there. And we're going to keep our two rules in mind, the rules being that every transaction has at least two accounts affected, your accounts being here, so every transaction will affect two of these, and every transaction will affect the accounting equation in such a way that it will remain in balance. So keeping that in mind, let's take a look at the first transaction. Owner A deposits cash into the business checking account, 100000 First question, is cash affected? I'm going to ask that every time through this worksheet and following worksheets. And this worksheet, of course, cash will be affected every time. But even when we go to other types of transactions, cash will be affected most often. If we work cash first, then it gives us a clue as to what other account will be affected and which way it will be going. So cash is affected. It's going up in this case. Now I'm going to type in cash here. I want to look at the formatting of the cell very quickly first off. First, there's a difference between being on a cell in Excel and being in the cell. If I just click on it one time, I'm on the cell. I could type in a number there. If I click double click on it, now I'm in the cell. You can see that now the cursor is within the cell there. If I want to get back off the cell and just be on it, we can select another cell or we can hit enter. All right. And then other thing to keep in mind is that if we enter any function or if we want to do a calculation such as a calculation in a calculator, two plus two, let's say, then we have to start with a function such as equals or plus or something then we can type the function 2 plus 2 it'll populate here it'll populate in the formula bar it will do the calculation when we select enter and then i can go back on the cell and select delete and delete that also note that if you hit some function such as equals or plus and you try to go to another cell it'll start doing this and so if that happens that that's because we have a formula just go back here delete that formula and then hit enter and then you can start over from from scratch also note that if you put something into a formula and it does something funny get off the cell rather than in the cell you don't want to be in the cell try to get out of it in some way if you have to delete the cell that's fine remember that you have the undo button up here so undo can always take you back to where you were so you should always be okay and you know keep that in mind <laughs> that that is there so first we're just going to type the 10,000 in here, we're in cell C3, indicated by C is the row, and three uh, column C, row three, right there. And we're going to type in uh, 100,000 in this case. And 
notice that I'm not typing in a comma or anything. Then I'm going to hit enter and it'll populate that in the format that we've decided to do it in. And how do we know what formula format it should be in? That's in the home tab, the numbers group. And this drop down will give us some basic formatting. There's more formatting down here. These worksheets will obviously be formatted for you. If you type your own worksheets and you note that there's no comma in there or it formatted as a date for some reason, you didn't want it to do that. Well, that's probably because we need to change the format of the cell. So you'll have to go over here and change this type of format to whatever format that we would like to see it in. So 10,000 is affected. What's the other side that affected? Who put that? I mean, 100,000 in cash is affected. Who put that cash in there? The owner. So I'm going to go to the owner's equity section. I'm going to go to the capital account. That capital account represents the money that is owed to the owner. In this case, the owner put in 100,000. So this side is also going to go up by 100,000. I'm going to type it into cell M3. Then we're going to select enter. And that will put the comma and whatnot in there in that format. We're also back in balance because total assets equal liabilities and equity. No effect on net income. I'm going to go ahead and put zeros in all the other accounts here. I'm going to practice putting a zero in and putting tab. I want to practice using the tab key. The tab key is two keys under the escape key on your keyboard. So the escape key is the upper left key on your keyboard. Tab is two keys under it. Tab is the thing that you want to use. I would also suggest using a 10 key pad on your keyboard. If you don't have one, you might want to purchase an external 10 key cab tab if you're going to enter a lot of numbers. And the tab will take you through to different cells that are on the side it'll take you to the right hand side and it'll also do that for database programs so it's good to know i'm going to hit zero tab tab zero tab tab zero tab tab zero tab 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 zero tab tab zero tab tab and zero now <clears throat> this is a lot faster than if we were going to use the mouse and and put those zeros in there and so it's good practice just to do that so now we have the transaction here this is our first transaction so there was no balance before that <clears throat> then we want to put the balance down here because there was no previous balance, all we need to do is bring these numbers down here. Once again, I could just type in again the 100,000, but we want to start using formulas to do this. So in cell C4, I'm in cell C4 right there under the 100,000. We're going to select equals and then I'm going to point to cell C3 and it'll actually type that in there. C3, it's indicating C3. I'm in the cell. It's indicated here. It's also indicated in the formula bar. So then I'm going to select enter and now I'm off the cell rather than in it. If I go back on it, I can see that that pulled it down. I can see it in the formula bar there. If I double click on it, it will then indicate what is being used here. If I want to get back off it, we have to hit enter and that'll take us back off. I'm going to do the same thing all the way through, even though there's zeros here. So now I'm in cell E4. I'm going to say this equals. I'm going to point to E3. Then I'm going to select tab, tab. I'm in cell G4. I'm going to say this equals. I'm going to point to cell G3 tab tab i'm in cell i4 i'm going to say this equals i'm going to point to cell i3 tab tab i'm in cell k4 i'm going to say this equals i'm going to point to cell k3 tab tab on cell m4 i'm going to say this equals i'm going to point to m3 tab tab i'm in o4 i'm going to say this equals I'm going to point to o3 tab tab i'm in q4 i'm going to equals and point to cell q3 tab tab and we're in s4 equals point to s3 and enter so we are now in balance there and we're going to go to our next transaction. Note, I don't care at this point about this row. When I'm thinking about transaction B, I only care about the previous balance. The transaction will go on this row. Then we'll sum them up on this row. So I'm only concerned with these three rows when we record transaction B, which says receive cash from client for work done. So is cash affected? Yes, we received cash. Therefore, I'm going to go right under the 100,000 in transaction B. And we're going to add 100,000. Once again, I'm on the cell rather than in the cell. I'm in cell C5, C5 there. We're going to type in 10,000, no commas, and I'm going to select enter. And then now we're off the cell rather than on the cell. We can see the comma in there and we have the 10,000. Why did people give us 10,000? What's the other account that will be affected? Well, we did work and when we, when we do work, we generated or earned, in this case, revenue. Revenue is going to be in the owner's equity section as part of the income statement. So here's revenue. If this side of the equal sign went up, then this side of the equal sign must be going up. So in cell 05, we're going to type in 10,000. Now I'm in the cell rather than on it. <clears throat> I'm going to select enter. And there we have it. Now we're back in balance there. 
now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the zeros all the way through there. Once again, I'm in cell E5, 0, tab, tab, G5, 0, tab, tab, I5, 0, tab, tab, K5, 0, tab, tab, M5, 0, tab, 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 Q5, 0, tab, tab, and S5, 0, and enter. That brings us back down to the last point when we started hitting tab underneath that cell. So there we have that now. We have the previous balance there. We have the new balance of B. And we're going to add those up. <clears throat> if we were going to take our calculator out, of course, then we would have the 100,000 plus the 10,000. The new balance should be 110 for cash. We're going to do that with a formula, though. And anytime we use a formula, we need to put equals first. So we're going to say equals, then point to the 100,000, which happens to be in cell C4. So we see that pop up. Then we're going to say plus the 10,000. We're going to point to it. And then C5 pops up there. So we want to add up what's in C4, 100,000, plus what's in C5, uh, 10,000. Then we're going to hit enter in order to do the calculation. Enter. There's the 110. We can see just by eyeballing it that that looks about right. 110, obviously, in this calculation, we can see that. We don't need to actually do the math a lot of times. But if we can verify it in our head that, man, that looks like it's going the right way. It's not. It didn't subtract the two or anything. That looks correct. Going to do the same thing over here all the way through, even though these are zeros, just to practice the calculation. So this equals the uh, E4 plus E5. And this time I'm going to hit tab to go to the next cell. Tab, tab. This equals, you're going to point to cell C, uh, G4 plus G5. Tab, tab. This equals, going to point to cell I4 plus I5. Tab, tab. I'm in K... Um, I'm in cell uh, K6 equals K4 plus K5, tab, tab, equals M4 plus M5, tab, tab, equals O4 plus O5, tab, tab, <clears throat> equals Q4 plus Q5, tab, tab, and finally equals S4 plus S5. So now the transaction was in balance here. And that means that our any bounce should be in balance. We could verify by highlighting the green numbers. The assets adds up to 110 and our formula bar down here adds it to 110 here. We can add up the other side of the equal sign liabilities and equity, which also adds up to 110, 110. We are in balance. Also note that that account affected net income because revenue went up and net income is revenue minus expenses. Therefore, revenue went up by 10,000 in there as well. So now we're on this balance there, and we're then going to record column C, the transaction that happens, and then we're going to have the new balance after that. We only care about these three columns at this time. Everything else is irrelevant to us while we are recording transaction C. So we paid cash to employees in this case. So once again, is cash affected? Yeah, we paid it. Therefore, cash should be going down. We're going to go to cell C7. C7 is right there. We can see it up here as well. And we're going to type, in this case, a negative. So I'm going to put a minus sign before it and then the 600. Then when we select enter, it will format the cell in whatever format has been chosen. So we'll say enter. And it's been chosen that negatives should be represented by brackets. Once again, I didn't have to type the brackets around it. If we click on the cell and look at the, at the formula bar, we just typed in 600. But the brackets went in there because that's the format of the cell, which is indicated by the home tab the numbers group and this numbers here then what else is the other account that is affected if we paid employees well it's not an asset it's not a liability it's